seated this morning. You can open up to the book of uh, 1 Corinthians and wait there if you'd like, specifically verse or chapter 12. And uh, uh, wait there. We'll get there shortly. And uh, we missed you last week. We were out of town and doing a little bit of vacationing and all of that. And, uh, uh, but we are excited to be back in town. And uh, I'm going to jump back in this morning into this series that I've been dealing with uh, called Keep Your Eye on the what? The Ball. Keep Your Eye on the Ball. What we've been dealing with really is a prophetic word, a prophetic word of focus. Come on, look at somebody and say, focus. Focus. Listen, in the culture that we live in, in the world that we live in, even in the things that are going on in our own lives, we need focus. Amen? Spiritually, we need focus. The foundation verses we've been using come out of Hebrews chapter 12. They're on the screen. Let me read it for us again as we step into this. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders, every unnecessary weight, and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the appointed race that is marked out for us. Here it is. Fixing our eyes on Jesus. Looking away from all that will distract. Jesus, the author and the perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. It is to grow weary or exhausted or discouraged. Fix your eyes on... Okay, oh, come on, you're going to have to talk to me this morning. Fix your eyes on Jesus. It's the issue of focus. So what we've been dealing with is, is, is why focus is so necessary, and it's because of the fog. Fog is, if you remember, it is the, the, the issue of distraction. And over this series, we've been dealing with the fog that rolls in because of culture. So it's an external uh, fog or distractions that, that seem to want to consume us and, and, and get us enveloped into the fog. And then there is the internal fog that we all have uh, that, that comes from us. The distractions that we create for our own life. It's our own drama. How many of you experience drama sometimes? Man. So because of the fog, because of distractions, focus is required. Distraction, if you remember, is part of the race. You are in a race that has been appointed for you, and distraction is part of the race. You have an enemy. Come on. His job is to steal, kill, destroy. His job is to try and envelop you in so much fog, whether it's external or internal, to try and envelop you in so much distraction to get you and I to miss out on the plan of God for our lives. He wants you to miss it. Look at somebody and say, don't miss it. Don't miss it. He wants you, the enemy of your soul wants you to miss the plan, even if it's not for your life, he wants you to miss the plan for this season. If we are not careful, there can be so much distraction, circumstances and situations and, and culture or whatever it is th th to get us to miss what God intends to do in and through you in this 
season, maybe not the season, maybe it's this week, maybe it's this year. He wants this year. He wants you to miss out on the plan of God this year or today even. See, sometimes it's, 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 he's just trying to get you to miss today. He just wants you to miss out on the presence of God today. Because if you were to enter into the presence of God today, you would find everything you need in the presence of God. There is fullness of joy in the presence of God. And if he can get you, even if you came to church, if he can get you to sit right there in that blue chair and be enveloped in the fog of life and get you to miss the presence of God, that is in the room, you will miss out on the joy and the peace and the grace and the mercy of the presence of God. And you'll go out of this place, I went to church, but I don't feel nothing. It is possible to go to church Sunday after Sunday and miss it. Come on, don't miss it. Look at somebody and say, don't miss it. Look at them and say, church is half over. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Maybe it's intended to get you to miss a divine encounter that is coming today. You know what a divine encounter looks like? God sets something up, crosses your path with someone. Then either you need it or they need it. And the enemy of your soul, he knows they need it, he knows you need it, and he wants you to miss it. So when it comes, he says, hey, look over there. He says, he says, squirrel. <laughs> right? He says, look over here. Get consumed with this. And then the divine encounter goes by and we miss it. Wow. Come on, don't miss it. That's the purpose of the fog. Staying in the plan of God and the will of God requires focused attention. Come on, focused attention. Fix your eyes on Jesus. He is the author. He is the initiator of faith. He is the perfecter of faith. He's the one who brings it to completion. He's the one who works it. He's the one who moves it. He's the one who, who does it. He's the one who, who, who has it all laid out. He is the beginning and the end. He is the alpha and the omega. He is the author and the perfecter. So fix your eyes on him. Focused attention is required in the days that you live or you and I will miss it. We will miss it. Don't miss it. Because everything that you need is found in him. That's why, that's why it says, listen, fix your eyes on Jesus. Why? Because he's all you need. Come on, can you just let your ears hear that from your own mouth? Jesus is all I need. He's everything. Whatever the situation is, you know what you need? Jesus. Whatever the circumstance is, you need Jesus. You know what you need in, in the raising of your children? You need Jesus. You know what you need in your marriage? Jesus. You know what you need at work? Jesus. He is everything that we need. Don't miss it. Listen, today I want to give you uh, two things as we go further with this series. Keep your eye on the ball. I just want to give you two things. So the first thing I need to give you is, is this. I need you. I know this is uncomfortable. We don't like to do this. It gets awkward. But can I just have you the best you can look around? Now, now don't, don't give anybody this, the stare, you know. Don't give them the, don't linger with an awkward stare, yeah. And uh, uh, don't, don't do that. It makes people feel awkward when you stare. Keep looking, keep looking, keep looking. Watch. Here's the first thing I need to give you. These people, you're supposed to be looking around. These people, these people are a gift of God into your life. Keep looking at them. Keep looking at them. These people are, are a gift of God into your life. 
and into my life. These people, these people, part of the body of Christ, keep looking around, keep looking around, keep looking, don't get awkward, just keep looking around. These people, watch now, keep, just keep looking. These people are deeply loved by the creator of the universe. Keep looking. These people are deeply loved by God. I am looking at people who are deeply loved by the God that I serve. Amen. Keep looking around. These people are loved by him. Watch. These people were pursued by God. Think about it. Keep looking around. You're, I know you're getting awkward with it. Just keep looking around. These people were pursued by God. Nobody comes to the Father unless they were drawn. These people were pursued by the living God. Think about that. Keep looking. Keep looking. Keep looking. Keep looking. These people were called and chosen by God. Look at that. Look at You're looking at some people that the Creator chose them. He chose them. He called them. These people, keep looking. You're stopping. Keep looking. I know your neck is hurting. It's a little exercise. Keep looking. These people are created by God for a divine purpose. Amen. These people are a gift of God into your life. Amen. Come on, now you can look this way now if you would like. These people. Now listen, let me help you connect something. Because while you were looking at them and I was saying these people, they were looking at you. See, because sometimes it's so easy to clap and say, oh, yeah, these people. But those people were looking at you. Because you are deeply loved by God. You, if you're a child of God anyway, were pursued by the king. No, see, that, see, that's just like, if you've been in church for a while, that rolls off like no big deal. He pursued you. He drew you. Amen. He chose you. He chose you. He called you. He created you and designed you for a divine purpose. I mean, supernatural kingdom of God purpose is what you have been built for. The body of Christ is a gift. It is a gift. You and I, we are part of the body of Christ and you are a vital part of it. You are, watch, a vital part of the plan of God in this age. You know what, what, what was said of Esther, for such a time as this, she was born into the kingdom. Watch, for such a time as this, you were born. And you were called, and you were placed, you were chosen, you, you, you have been gifted by God for this time and for this season. If every part of the body of Christ could get that, could really have a revelation of that, I'll tell you the truth, things would, would, would change in the body of Christ. If this is the truth, and it is, the, the Bible tells us that this fact then requires focused attention. If there is more to life than just making some money and trying to make it to vacation or retire. If there is more to life than that, then this requires focused attention so that we do not miss out. This requires focused attention. So what that means is that I have to stop coasting through life 
I have to stop just coasting uh, through this life, just trying to live for myself, just trying to survive the week and be a little happy and just trying to get some good stuff into my life. If this is the truth, if I have been created for this, then, then it requires focused attention and I've got to stop just, hey, I just it's about me and it's about what I feel and it's what I want this summer and this year and what my goals and my this and my that. If it is true that you and I were created for a divine purpose, then it requires focused attention, which we're dealing with. Focus. I want to show you a picture God gave me about you. As we came into the vision retreat this January, I told you that, that this message actually was the, the if, if, if there was a single prophetic word over the year, I felt like God was saying, focus. And one of the pictures, God often speaks to me in pictures, probably because I'm, I'm simple, I like to look at pictures. Little Mia showed me a picture this morning of her artist work. I like to look at the pictures of it, and, 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 and God showed me pictures, and he showed me a picture about you, and I want to show that to you, but I'm going to need a little help from you, all right? Is that is just a little help from you? I need, I need somebody. Listen, you don't, you're not going to have to sing. You don't have to do a little dance. You don't have to do anything. I just need a few people that I'm going to just place up here for a couple of minutes, all right? I need somebody who has good eyesight. You don't need glasses or contacts, but you have good eyesight. Uh, I need you to come. I need somebody with, with good eyesight. Who's got good eyesight? Uh, don't, don't make me come to you. If uh, you got glasses on, Rose, hold right there. Miss Valerie, come here. You got good eyesight. You're not wearing contacts. Right? All right, right there. I need somebody who is, I need two people who wear glasses, but I need somebody who is nearsighted and somebody who is farsighted. Nearsighted, uh, how does that work again? Uh, okay, so I'm nearsighted. Watch this. Uh, there's a weird thing that goes on. Most people, when, when, I, when I have my glasses off, you are a big fuzz. <laughs> Some of y'all are looking really good. <laughs> When I put my glasses on, you become clear. In order for me to read up there, when I, when I look down to read the Bible, I have to take my glasses off. It's maybe the opposite. It's the opposite of my wife. She has to put them on to read. There is nearsighted and farsighted. I need a nearsighted person and a farsighted person uh, to come. What are you? Farsighted. Go right over there. Uh, Rose, are you, what are you? Are you nearsighted? Yeah, right, right there. All right, I need somebody else to come up. Just come up, anybody. I need somebody uh, to come up and just hang on to this. Jen, uh, hang on to this. Valerie, stand right in the center. Uh, Jen Fetterman, just hang right on to this. These are, yes, binoculars. I need somebody else. I need like, I need three more people. I just need three people. Come, go, go. Sharon, come. Jake, come. Jake, stand right there. Sharon, go right down over there. I need one more person. Melissa, stand right over there. I'm just going to give you some things, and I want you to just hang on to them because I need, this is a little heavy. You got bare feet. Don't drop it on your toes, girl. <laughs> All right, just hang right on to it. Jake, hang on to that, my friend. And uh, you've noticed this here at the, at the pulpit for, for a couple of weeks. And Sharon, you just hang right, you just stand at this thing right there. You all have something that affects your sight. We have a microscope, we have a magnifying glass, we have nearsighted, we have good eyesight, we have farsighted, we have binoculars and a telescope. And this is a picture that God showed me about you, about the different gifts that are in the body of Christ, and everyone sees a little different. You are a gift to the body of Christ, and how you see your perception is different than everyone else in the body of Christ. Y'all just kind of stay there for a couple of minutes, and we're going to talk about this because I want you to see what this is. The rest of you, I, I had you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, so get there, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And I'm going to read something, may be familiar to you, but I want you to focus 
on what I'm about to read, beginning with verse 4. We're going to read 4 to 7, then bump down to verse 11. You ready? Here we go. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning with verse 4. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities, but is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. We're dealing then in the issue of the spiritual gifts, but in the case of this picture here, I I need you to see the different gifts within the body of Christ are given for the profit of who? Of all. Your gifts have been given to profit the body of Christ, to be a benefit to the body of Christ. That's why you are necessary to the body of Christ. It's not just about you. Look at somebody and say, it ain't just about you. Amen. You have been given as a gift into the body of Christ, and it's not just about you. It is for the benefit of the body of Christ. You are necessary in the body of Christ. This is not just a hobby that we do occasionally. This race, this life that has been set aside, set apart, this thing that we've been called to by God carries divine purpose. Amen. Bump down to verse 11. All of these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and He distributes them to each one just as He determines. Just as the body, though one, has many parts, but all of its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one Spirit, so as to form one body. Whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but many. Verse 15, now if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. Come on, focus. Just as he wanted them to be. Verse 19, if they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts but one body. Verse 21, the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat them with special honor. And the parts which are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Verse 27, now you are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part. Part of it. Listen to me. You and I were created to be and designed to be part of something bigger than ourselves. Amen. You were created to be, to be a part of something bigger than yourself. You were created to be a part of something. Come on, say, I am a part. See, he created us that way. And you and I are part of what? The body of Christ. And you and I have been given gifts by God. 
Even if you don't know what they are yet, you have been given gifts by God. Gifts designed to help you carry out and fulfill your calling and your purpose and your part of the plan of God. Your part of the purpose of God. If you were created for a purpose, then you have been given gifts to help you fulfill what you have been called. I have not been given your gifts because I am not called to do your part. You are called to do your part. I am called to do my part. Come on, stay with me. Come on, look at somebody and say, focus. You have been given gifts to fulfill your calling, and those gifts are what we are responsible for, and we are responsible for what we have been called to do. Amen. He's given us what we need, both personally and corporately. And he says, we, we are part of something bigger than ourselves. Now, I know we just celebrated July 4th, and we celebrate the independence of our nation, and that's good for a nation, but spiritually, independence is a trap. Independence, spiritually, is a trap of your enemy to isolate you away from the rest of the body of Christ of whom you are a part of. As if you don't need the rest of the body. Come on, if you're a foot, you ain't going nowhere without the rest of the body. Amen. Amen. You, listen, that's how he created us. That's how he designed it to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. Spiritual independence is a trap of the enemy and it will cause you to miss the plan of God for your life because the plan of God is attached to the body of Christ. It is attached to something bigger. We were designed to need the body of Christ. We were designed in order to fulfill his plan. We were designed to need the other parts. Man, the plan of God is so much bigger than just paying your bills. Amen. But man, we get so consumed with that, don't we? Just got to work, 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 work. Got to have more money. Got to pay the bills. Got to get better stuff, bigger stuff, more stuff, better toys. I got to get stuff. It, is, it can be such a, a, a fog of distraction. The plan of God is bigger than that. Amen. There is more to life than just getting up and going to work. There's more to life than the next vacation. Amen. We just got home from vacation, and my wife looked at me and said, we need a vacation. <laughs> vacation ain't going to solve it. Amen. There is more to life than just those surface level things that we get consumed with. There is a divine purpose over your life. Amen. You have a calling. You have a purpose in the kingdom of God. And so, church, this is you. God showed me this picture and said, this is you. You have everything you need to carry out the will of God that I have given for you. Watch, everything that you need to carry out the plan of God for your life, God has given you. The enemy's job is to cover it in fog as if you don't. But he has given, he has given different perspectives and different gifts within the body corporately and he has given them into your own house, he has given them into your own life. You have what you need to carry out what he has called you to do. How cruel would it be for God to call you to do something and not give you the gifts that you need to do what he called you to do. That's not how God works. If he's called you to do something, he has given you everything you need to do it and do it well. Amen. The gifts of God, the callings of God. And so this is you. And all of these see differently. The microscope probably of the, and this is laid out in an order. You can see the microscope. You can see every little detail of it. If you've, the, the magnifying glass, the glasses here, the binoculars can see further. And then this, this, this telescope. Sharon, look, do me a favor, look in that telescope. Listen, listen, let me tell you why you need. 
And so someone with eyesight can see what is right there. That this, I don't need, I can see, I can see further than anybody in the place. You need the one who can see right here or you will trip and you will fall. The microscope can see great detail that the telescope cannot see, but the microscope can't see what's right there either. You and I need the rest of the parts of the body of Christ because the parts of the body of Christ bring strength to us. There is strength in numbers. There is safety in numbers. When used together, this becomes strength. When it's just individual, it's actually weakness. Because you were created to need the rest of the people in the line. And this creates strength. This creates Everything that we need to fulfill our divine purpose. Let me say it this way before they sit down. You will never fulfill your divine purpose alone. Amen. If you, if you think, if you see, a lot, this is one of the things, oh, I, don't, I don't need this whole church thing. I can still be a Christian and not have church and not go to church. And typically people say that because they've been hurt by the church. Listen, don't put your hope in church people. Come on. Church people will let you down. Put your hope in God. Amen. Amen. Fulfilling the divine purpose that you are responsible for will never happen alone. Thank you all. You can just put it all just kind of right here. Leave that, micros- that telescope right over there because we're going to deal with that in just a second. Uh, all of these things have been given into the body of Christ. Now, you know who the Apostle Paul is. If you've heard of him, some would call him the, the greatest apostle, maybe. He wrote, what, two-thirds of the New Testament. Uh, the Apostle Paul, he, uh, he used to go by the name Saul. But, but, but the Apostle Paul, we often read about him and hear about him and, and the great things that he did, but the Apostle Paul did not do it alone. Often, if you read some of the books that he wrote in the New Testament, at the end of it, you will see greetings from other people in his life, people that were traveling with him, people that were were there with him. Up on the screen, there's a list of some of them. Let me just run. You might recognize some of their names. These are people who were traveling companions of Paul, people that were helpers and supporters, and even people who were imprisoned with Paul, Timothy, Barnabas, Luke, Titus, Okoye. Aquila, Justice, Phoebe, Demas, Gaius, Marcus, Priscilla, and Silas. And then, go to the next one. And then there's a whole list of other people that we often don't think about and we often don't hear about that, we're, uh, that are, 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 are recorded in Scripture that were a part of the ministry of Paul. When we think of Paul, the Apostle Paul, completing and doing, uh, running the race that he was given to run, he did not run the race alone. These people who who never, their names are not really in the spotlight, and yet they were a part of the ministry of the Apostle Paul. You and I will never fulfill the divine purpose of God alone. It won't happen. Staying on mission, staying focused, staying on the plan of God requires the input of the various gifts within the body of Christ that God has placed into your life. Now this is a church full of people, but, but listen, maybe some in this church are, are kind of closer to you and God has put more in, a, in your, your, your immediate life and they are a gift to you. And you are a gift to them. It requires it. Having the right people. Watch. Just like, and we talked about this, just like having the wrong people in your life will increase the fog. Did you know there are some people in your life that bring fog? They bring distraction. 
they are rolling in the smoke of drama. And when they come into your life, man, I tell you what, sometimes there are people and they comes in and then their smoke, their fog chokes you. So just like having the wrong people in your life will increase the fog, having the right people in your life can decrease the fog. Praise God. Having the right people in your life can be a blessing to decrease it. To help us move forward. God's, pl God's plan requires focused attention, and focused attention requires the other parts of the body of Christ. Because they can see things you can't. The second thing I need to give you this morning is this, focus requires an adjustment. Every one of these things that I had up here, uh, uh, for, for focus to happen, it requires adjustment. Here on, this, here on this telescope, when you look down through it, there's these knobs, and these knobs are an adjustment that will bring whatever you're looking at into focus. The, the binoculars have little knobs there. The telescope has little knobs. The glasses themselves are the adjustment to bring focus. The magnifying glass, if you, if you move it like this, it brings things into focus. Focus, which is vital, which is necessary, which is required for us to fulfill the plan of God. Focus requires an adjustment. So it goes like this. I don't know if you know what the sport of rowing is. This is not often a sport that's on television. It's not, it's not the, the crowds don't gather like they do for football, but the sport of rowing. College sports has this sport, rowing, and, and you probably can only watch them on, on YouTube or something like that, or the Summer Olympics. How many of you have ever seen rowing in the Summer Olympics? And these people get in a little tiny skinny boat, and they sit in this boat, and they all have just one oar, and they, they, they have their back to the direction that they are going. And they begin to row just their one oar, just their part of the boat. And they row their part and they move that thing through the water and the boat begins to move through the water. The boat begins to go in that direction and there is this person that sits in the back end of the boat. This person is facing a different direction than everybody else in the boat. This is the person, he is the only one or she is the only one that sees where the boat is going. Probably don't, have never heard this before, but the, the, the name of that position is the coxswain. And they sit in that position and they give commands to the people who are doing their part in the boat. And that one, the Spirit of God, by the way, that one can see where we are going. He's the only one that knows where we're going, by the way. You and I are doing our part and we can't see everything, praise God, or we would mess it up probably. But we are, ha we are called to do our part. You are called to to row your part in the body of Christ and the coxswain, the, in this case, the Spirit of God gives commands and that person sees where they're going. That person is the one who gives commands for the sake of direction, moving in, 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 the, in the path the boat is supposed to go and that person carries a beat that says, row, row, row. And everybody in the boat needs to be in sync with the one who can see everything. The boat moving seamlessly through the water and arriving at the destination and not crashing on the side requires that everyone be in sync with the one who can see. 
It is not about I'm going to do my own thing at my own pace. I'm going to row how I want to row. And when I feel like rowing or not feel like rowing, when one part doesn't do its part, man, things, things will begin to turn. Things will begin to shift. But if everyone will be in sync with the one who can see, Galatians 5 verse 25 says this, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Amen. It requires an adjustment with and to the Spirit of God. Focus requires an adjustment to be in sync with the Spirit of God. It, it is about being in sync with the heartbeat of heaven. And when the body of Christ is in sync with the heart beat of heaven, we will, we will move seamlessly through fulfilling the plan and the purpose of God for our boat. See, that's, that's, that's what it requires. See, watch everybody in the boat. Here's what it requires. It requires shh. It requires pay attention. It requires listen and adjust. See, that's what focus requires, is that we adjust. Listen to this verse, verse 46, or Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. This is a lost art in our culture. I say primarily because of these things. Because every waking moment, every spare moment, that little thing can fill. Social media and the different things that watch the fog of life can fill every waking moment. Even if we don't get distracted with this, our own thoughts in a moment of downtime, instead of be still and being able to wait on God, our thoughts go to the worry and the fret of what we're dealing with at the moment. And it consumes the moment. See, the fog is meant to keep us out of sync. But listen, listen, there are decisions that are coming for every one of us. There are decisions that are coming, decisions about your time, decisions about this circumstance or that situation, decisions about direction, whatever it might be, there are decisions that are coming. And those decisions require focused attention. Listen, listen, because those decisions that are coming will either create more fog, more difficulty, more distraction, or those decisions will bring Seamless, smooth, blessing, movement, growth into your life. See, sometimes we don't stop and think ahead that there are decisions coming. Even in my own life, and I need focused attention so I don't miss it. That I'm not looking over there and then I go this way with it and the decision gets made based upon what I feel. Based upon my opinion. Based upon what somebody else tells me. Listen, I don't need, I don't need someone else to tell me. I need the one in the boat that can see everything to tell me. 
I need the Spirit of God to give me direction to get through today. I, I, I don't need all the, all the noise of everything else. I need the Spirit of God to speak into my life. Listen to this, Isaiah 30, 21. Your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right or whenever you turn to the left, we need the voice of the Spirit of God. By the way, this is how the Apostle Paul lived. He's in prison. They're singing, remember, with Silas and the walls shake and the doors open and they stay put. They're on a boat and it's about to sink and the Spirit of God says everybody to, is going to live if they stay right with you. Stay together. The Apostle Paul says, hey, I think I'm going to go over to this place called Bithynia and I'm going to take the gospel there. And the Spirit of God says, no, don't go there. Gives them a vision that says you're actually going to Macedonia. This is how he lived. He fulfilled. He finished the race, if you remember. How did he walk in the divine purpose and calling of God? It was listening to the voice of the one who can see everything. And he adjusted to it. Watch this. Are you ready? Here's the adjustment. Are you ready? Here's the adjustment. The adjustment will change how we see. The adjustment gives us an eternal perspective. Watch this verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 16 to 18 says, Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing. We all said amen. amen. Yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Amen. Praise God, the inward man does not age like the outward man. Woo, praise God. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Come on, see, this is the thing. We can get so distracted with what is in the temporary. And the adjustment is required, and he gives us an eternal perspective, and a greater even eternal perspective. Watch, this is when we become aware that we are a part of a bigger plan. This is when we become aware of the big plan of God and that we are a part of it. This eternal perspective, uh, the, one of the last verses in Scripture, it's Revelation 22, verse 20. Watch this. He who testifies to these things says, surely I am coming quickly. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Watch this. An eternal perspective, Jesus is coming back. Amen. That fact requires focused attention. He is coming back. And in light of that, 2 Peter 3, 9, the Lord is not slack or slow concerning, concerning his promise of returning, he's speaking of, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Watch, there is an assignment between now and the time he returns. And you and I have an assignment. We have a job to do in and for the kingdom of God in this season. When he gives a, a change or an adjustment, he'll give us an eternal perspective. And we will see that the, the plan is so much bigger than just what we can see in the temporary. Listen, church, focus is so necessary. It is so necessary in the days that we live. The Bible tells us what the last days will continue to become like and focus church is so necessary. 
in the days ahead. Focus. Don't miss it. Don't miss the plan of God just because things are, are going on in our culture or things. Don't miss the job assignment from heaven. Don't, don't miss because of the fog. Let me bring you back to this. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Can I just have you close your eyes this morning? Fix your eyes on Jesus. I gave you two things. Embrace the strength of the body of Christ. Don't isolate yourself. And adjust yourself to the heartbeat of heaven. Listen, things often are in so much of a hurry. Often there's, there's so much noise and so much hurry up. That sometimes we, we, we can't take the time. Listen, sometimes even church... One of the greatest hassles that pastors get is hurry up. Hurry up. We can do our hobby for 10, 12 hours at a time and church for an hour is almost like hurry up. Because I got some place to be. I got some place I got to go to. to take the time. Listen, this is the challenge of the culture we live in, to still be able to wait in the presence of the Lord and listen. Come on, just, just for a, a minute or two, don't go to sleep on me. Just Fix your eyes on him. Some of you, you've, you've come in with some serious weight. Some serious circumstances. And there is someone in your boat who can see everything. And that he would give direction to you. That he would even release the peace of God that passes all understanding to you. Some might say the situation you're in requires fretting and worrying and being all stirred up, but the peace of God that doesn't make sense given your situation can be released to you. to be quiet just for a second just to give the time just to, just to just to focus just to listen because there's a plan over your life